In this video series, I'll be demonstrating the use and setup of the Instron 3369 Universal Testing System. We have two of them here at UC Merced used for various purposes, mainly for strength of materials. Each of these machines are 50,000 Newton machines capable of compression or tension and 50,000 Newtons approximately 10 to 11,000 pounds, so that gives you an idea of the range. We have multiple attachments for these machines. We've got the ability to do tension, compression, three-point bending, four-point bending. We have an accessory for doing temperature testing. We've got an oven, as you can see behind me, that allows for testing at, at elevated temperatures. We have the ability to measure strain directly with an attachment. We have several different load cells. The load cells are what read the force, and we have load cells that are capable of 50,000 newtons, 2,000 newtons, and so on and so forth. We'll go over, the, go over those details in other videos. This series will include setup of load cells, how to change them. It'll go through how to run a tensile test, uh, compression test using the oven and a few other items related to the use of the machine including the Blue Hill software that comes with the uh, with the equipment for controlling the the equipment. I'll start off by going over some of the basic components of the machine. Of course, there are various configurations, so things will change, but some of the basics uh, I'll point out at this time. In this particular setup, we're set up for doing tensile testing. These are wedge action grips that allow us to hold on to the test coupon. They are connected to the load cell. This is a 50,000 Newton load cell. By the way, these load cells, direction, they're capable of both tension and compression, so they can read both values. We have the cross member here that is the part that actually moves. So if we're doing tension, this is moving up to pull the sample apart. In compression, it's moving down. We have the ability to move the cross member manually by using this button here, up or down. It moves the, the cross member at the highest speed uh, that the machine is capable of. We have an emergency stop switch here. Back behind, we have our environmental chamber. And again, I'll go over that more in detail in that particular video. It is on a track, allowing the chamber to slide forward. I'm holding an extensometer. The extensometer clips onto a sample that is being, usually we use this in a tensile test, and so it clips onto a sample and it directly reads strain. So it starts off with an original gauge length of one inch, and as it reads the, the displacement, it automatically converts it to strain, and we get a direct strain value. Over on the side of the machine, we have our connections for our load cells and if an extensometer is being used, so that is done in this area over here. The power switch to the system is somewhat hidden. It's back behind this piece right here uh, next to the, the power cord that comes in. Look in that area and you'll, you'll find it. Of course, we have a computer with a monitor and Blue Hill running at this point in time. And again, we'll have a specific video on how to program Blue Hill, the Blue Hill software with the test profile that you're interested in. As I mentioned, the two machines that we have are nearly identical, but I do want to point out a couple of differences. Our second machine does not have a temperature chamber on it, so you can see behind there's, there's no temperature chamber uh, attached to it. I also want to point out that this particular system has been set up with attachments to do uh, flexural testing, so either three-point or four-point testing. Uh, you can see that we've got these two uh, supports right here that allow us to lay a beam across there. This would not be on here. 
but we would have, and this would not as well, but a beam that would lie across here and allow for us to come down and push down on that beam. There are also attachments that go on to either system that have supports like this, but they're much closer together. And so this gives us an increased length for doing those structural, pardon me, flexural tests. I have an array of components and parts that are laid out here that I'd like to explain to give a brief introduction into the, the various components that go along with these machines. Our stop, I'm gonna start off with the wedge action grips. The wedge action grips are good for tensile tests. They are called wedge action because as the sample, which is in between these jaws, as that sample is pooled, the wedge shape of the two jaws uh, will tighten the jaws down as the sample is pooled. So when we tighten down the jaws initially by turning this handle, uh, we grip down on the sample and we don't have to use a very large twist or torque to, to uh, to clamp down on it because during the test, the wedge grips, which by the way are serrated, will clamp down on, on the part. While I have the wedge action grip out, I want to talk about the fact that Instron has two different interfaces between attachments and load cells. One is a large interface and one is a smaller interface. The large interface is referred to as a type DM interface and that's Instron's labeling. So for example, the wedge grips that we have and the 50,000 Newton load cell have a type DM interface and so these fit together and there is a half inch pin that goes through to connect them. The other type of interface is called the OM interface. And it is a much smaller interface with a much smaller pin. I believe it's a six millimeter pin that goes through instead of the half inch. Our smaller load cells have a type OM interface. And so as I get out this smaller load cell, I can show you that this OM interface fits in here. This attachment, by the way, is a knife edge attachment for three-point bend tests. This would be the center force coming down. So again, DM and OM. I'll be using those terms as I explain the different components. The next thing I'd like to point out is that for compression tests, we have two sets, and I'm showing one set here, but two sets of compression platens. Uh, it's good to use the platen with the rings on the bottom and the other one on the top so that when you're placing a test specimen, you can do your best to center it up by using those, those rings. I'd like to also point out that there is an adapter that goes from the type DM to the type OM. This is used in the bottom of the machine. So the bottom of the machine has a type DM connection, and so this fits into that. But if there's something that at the bottom of the machine that you wanted to place uh, that had a type OM connection, for example, this attachment here, then you would be capable of doing that at, at the bottom of the machine. You could actually use this also on the top of the machine. For example, if you had a load cell, 50,000 Newton load cell, the DM connection could be made there. And then if you would like to attach an OM attachment, again, same thing could be done there. So that adapter will come in handy. Here's the type DM connecting pin with wire clip to keep it in place. As I do more experiments and show you how to put devices on, we'll look at uh, more detail on those. And this is the type OM connecting pin. Uh, so for example, would go through this and with the wire clip on it. As far as load cells go, we have three different capacities. We've already talked about the 50,000 Newton. We also have a 2,000 Newton. By the way, the 2,000 Newton and below have the type OM. 
And then we also have a 100 Newton load cell, the small one here, and of course an OM connection on that. When connecting the load cells, we have two different sizes of bolts to connect them. The large bolt is for the 50,000 Newton only and the small for the other two. I'll go through the attachment uh, in, a, in a later video, uh, but I will point out in this basic video that, for example, this small pin or a bolt goes into here. It would be going through the cross member. When attaching the small load cells and using the small bolt, we have three washers that are used. And those three washers are used like this. When you are using the large load cell, we only have the two largest washers, the large bolt, and that is attached into the load cell. For the four point bin test, we have a bottom support and a top support. Your specimen would be laid across the bottom support and the top support would come in to do a four point bin test. The nice thing about a four point bin test is that if you were look, to look at the shear and bending moment diagrams, uh, on the bending moment diagram you would notice that when this comes down on the specimen in the area between here the bending moment is constant and so that has some advantages to it. This attachment is used in conjunction with the temperature chamber. Uh, again, in a video I'll talk about the temperature chamber, but this pull rod attaches to the load cell, which is going to be up here, and it drops down into the temperature chamber. At this point here, you could attach, um, say for example, a wedge grip to hold on to the sample. This portion of the pull rod comes up from the bottom of the system and you could put for example a wedge grip here inside the temperature chamber. Talking about tools for just a minute, this Allen wrench is used for the small bolt for attaching load cells. This larger torque wrench with the Allen wrench attachment on the end is used for the large bolt that goes into the larger or largest load cell that we have. And then also we have a, a rod that is used to tighten the check nuts on certain attachments. For example, the wedge grip has a check nut around here. This goes inside of that to tighten it. When we do the video on the tinsel test, I'll show you how to use that tool and place that in position. A couple of comments regarding the extensometer. The extensometer comes with a variety of spring clips that attach on the end of the arms. These spring clips are used to accommodate different sizes and shapes of test coupons that you are testing. This particular set of spring clips works well for the test coupon that is used for the tension experiment for strength and materials. So to those of you using the machines, chances are, are likely that the spring clips that are on here are going to be the appropriate clips because for the most part this extensometer is used solely for the tension experiment in strength of materials. If somebody else is doing research though, for example, and testing something else, they may switch out these spring clips. And I'll show you how to do that in the video when we do the tension testing. This concludes the introduction to the basics of the Instron 3369 Universal Tester. As I mentioned in later videos, I'll go through the details of running a tensile test, compression test, of using the temperature chamber, and using the Blue Hill software and writing program profiles to run the machine.